Hi everyone, welcome to the lecture on ethics for autonomous and intelligent system presented by Ninja Ho. Here are the topics we're going to cover in this lecture. First, introduction to the ethically aligned design, which includes the three pillars of the ethically aligned design conceptual framework, the general principles of ethically aligned design, definitions for classic ethics in AIS research, second, equal availability of AIS. We're going to cover a case of the Indian animation industry and discuss the barriers in equal availability of AIS and solution. Finally, there are three formatic quiz questions to check the comprehending of the lecture material. The three pillars of ethically aligned design conceptual framework. First, universal human values, which including respect human rights, safeguard environment and natural resources, and also service of all people. Second, political self-determination and data agency, which implies the potential of a well-implemented AIS to facilitate political freedoms and democracy, improve government operations and protect our privacy. Third, technical dependability, which implies AIS systems should deliver service reliably, safely, and actively accomplish the objectives. The general principle of ethically aligned design includes human rights, well-being, data agency, effectiveness, transparency, accountability, awareness of misuse, and competence. Definitions for classical ethics in AIS research First, assigning foundations for morality, autonomy, and intelligence. When we program the moral and legal rules into AIS behavior, we ignore the existence of econo economics and political dimension and the discussion on the flexibility of implementation. Second, distinctions between agents and the patients, which means we need an adequate assessment of expectations and the use of language to distinguish natural self-organizing systems and artificial non-organizing systems. Third, the need for an accessible classical ethics vocabulary, which means we need a user-friendly vocabulary to raise the awareness on the classical ethics to the digital society. Fourth, presenting ethics to the creator of autonomous and intelligent systems, which means we need to provide the students and the engineers with practical tools to work on the engineering projects aligned with classical ethics. Fifth, accessing classical ethics by corporations and companies. It describes the need of an accessible method to integrate the classical ethics into the daily agenda of operations of companies and corporations. And finally, the impacts of autonomous systems on the workplace is describing the issues of data protection, bias, and error outcome when employers apply AIS in the workplace. Before we discuss the equal availability of AIS, I would like to show the case of the India animation industry. Between 1990s to 2000, all South Studio worked with large animation company like Disney started to appear in India. At the beginning of 21st century, the animation industry transformed from 2D to 3D pipeline. India managed to develop their own CG technology ecosystems and attract a lot of overseas investment. According to the latest reports from KPMG, the animation studios in India have to 25% of the global market and it creates tens of thousands of jobs in India. It's a fact that the AIS is crucial for creating sustainable economic growth. However, compared with high-income countries, low- and medium-income countries facing restrictions to access to technology development innovations due to the restrictions in education, and barriers of open-source licensing, political restrictions, and also difficulties in, in deployment of technological solutions due to the infrastructure, human resource, business models, adaption, and so on. So there's a concern that it may accelerate the inequality in pursuit of a sustainable future. Here are some possible approaches to achieve equal availability. I classify them from the aspect of policymakers in low- and medium-income countries, high-income countries, and business, and also from the research aspect. 